Hi, and welcome to the Facts Crew channel. Today we want to address a concern and warnings people have about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a term used to describe a computer's ability to perform tasks that usually require human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision making, and translating. Increasingly, computers have been able to perform tasks that require human intelligence. Such tasks have traditionally been undertaken by human beings and have been core to our understanding of being human. We all have a hope that a smart AI will bring a better world for all of us. But there also exists a big concern that a super intelligent AI will take over more and more jobs from human beings. It's not a secret that many experts believe AI is going to have a huge impact on our future as humans. But as with any advancement, there are also worries about what could go wrong. When you think about the power of AI and how it's already capable of doing so much in just a few years. Is it really worth the risk? Continue watching this video and see what Elon Musk thinks. About Level 5 Complete Autonomy Self-Drive Cars. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, it's great to be here again. So I, I, I'm extremely confident that Level 5, or, or essentially complete autonomy, will be with, uh, will happen. And I think it will happen very quickly. Um, I think at Tesla, we, we, I feel like we're very close to level five autonomy. Um, you know, I think I, I, I remain confident that uh, we will have the, the functionality for the basic functionality for level five autonomy uh, complete this year. Um, the the thing to appreciate for level five autonomy is really um, what level of safety is acceptable for the public streets um, relative to human safety and then uh, so is it, is, it, is it enough to be twice as safe as humans like I, I do not think that the uh, regulators will accept equivalent safety to humans so the question is will it be twice as safe as a requirement three times as safe five times as safe ten times as safe so you can think of really level five autonomy as kind of like a march of nines. Like, do you have 99.99% uh, safety, 99.99999%? How many nines do you want? Of, and what is the acceptable level? And then what amount of data is required to convince regulators that it is sufficiently safe? Um, those are the actual uh, in-depth questions, I think, to be asking about level five autonomy. That it will happen is a certainty. Yes, I, I think there are no fundamental challenges remaining for level five autonomy. Uh, the, there are many small problems. Um, and then there's the, the challenge of solving all those small problems and then putting the whole system together um, and, just, and, just, and, and just keep addressing the long tail of problems. So you'll find that you're able to handle the vast majority of, of situations, but then there'll be something very odd. And then you have to have the system figure out a train to deal with these very odd situations. Um, and this is why you, could, you, you need a kind of a real world situation. Nothing is more complex and weird than the real world. Uh, any simulation we create is necessarily a subset of the complexity of the real world. So, um, I mean, we're, we're really deeply enmeshed in, in dealing with the, 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 the tiny details of level five autonomy, but I'm, I'm absolutely confident that this can be accomplished with the hardware that is in the Tesla today, and simply by making software improvements, uh, we can achieve level five autonomy. I'm not sure I totally agree with dividing it into those categories, perception, cognition, and action, but if, if you do use those categories, I'd say that probably perception, it, we've made, if you say like, recognition of objects. We've made incredible progress in recognition of objects. In fact, I think it would probably be fair to say that uh, an advanced uh, image recognition system today is better than almost any human, um, it, it, even in an expert field. So um, it's, it's really a question of like how much compute power, how much, uh, you know, how many computers were required to train it, uh, how many compute hours, what was the efficiency of the uh, image training system. But in terms of image recognition or, or sound recognition, and really any signal, you can say, say like, generally speaking, uh, any any byte stream, 
Um, it, the, 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 it can, can a modern AI system uh, bend things accurately with it for a given byte stream extremely well. Uh, cognition, this, this is probably the weakest area. If you say like, uh, is it, do, you, is, do you understand concepts and able, are you able to reason effectively and can you be a creative in a way that makes sense? Um, where, where, because you, you have to certainly uh, advanced AIs that are very creative, but they do not curate their 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 creative actions very well. And so we, we look at it, and it's like it's not it's not quite right. Um, it will it will become right though. Uh, and then action, if you sort of I think maybe if you think of like things like uh, games uh, as maybe something part of the action part part of things. Obviously, at this point. Uh, any game with rules, uh, AI will be uh, superhuman at any game with uh, an understandable set of rules. Like, it's essentially any game below a certain degree of freedom level. Um, so, really, I'd say at this point, any game. There's, there's really, it would be hard, hard pressed to think of a game where if there was enough attention paid to it, that we would not make it superhuman, a superhuman AI that could play it. Um, and that's not even taking into account the faster reaction time of, time of AI. So in developing, in developing AI chips for to, uh, autopilot, what we found was that the, the, there was no system on the market that was capable of doing inference uh, within a reasonable cost or power budget. So we, if we had gone with a conventional uh, GPUs um, and CPUs and that kind of thing, we would have needed uh, several hundred watts and uh, we would have needed to fill up the trunk with computers and GPUs and a big cooling system, uh, which is important for range for an electric car. So we developed our own uh, AI chip, the, the Tesla full self-driving computer uh, with uh, dual system on chips with the uh, 8-bit and uh, accelerators for doing the, the dot products. Um, I think a lot of people, may, well, probably a lot of people in this audience are aware of it, but AI consists of doing a great many dot products. <laughs> this is like, if you know what a dot product is, it's just a hell of a lot of dot products, which effectively means that our brain must be doing a lot of dot products. Um, so we, we've, this, this is, we still actually haven't fully explored the, the power of the Tesla full self-driving computer. In fact, we only turned on the, set, the second system on chip um, partially a few months ago. So uh, making full use of the, the Tesla full stack driving computer will probably take us at least uh, another year or so. Um, then we also have uh, a, the Tesla Dojo system, which is a, a training system, um, and that's intended to be able to process uh, vast amounts of video data uh, to improve the training for the AI system. So uh, we've, the, the, the Dojo system, um, and that's like a FP16 uh, training system. Uh, that uh, is primarily uh, constrained by heat um, and by communication between the chips. Um, and so we're developing uh, new buses and new sort of heat re um, re uh, heat rejection or cooling systems uh, that enable uh, a, a very high Terra hop, a very high op, more than Terra, a very high operation computer um, that that way will be able to process video or data effectively. How, how do we see the evolution of AI algorithms? Um, I'm not sure how, the best way to understand this, except that what uh, the neural net seems to mostly do is take a massive amount of information from reality, primarily. Uh, passive optical uh, and create uh, a, a vector space, essentially compress a massive amount of photons into, uh, into a vector space. And I was just thinking actually on the drive this morning that, you know, you, like, have you tried accessing the vector space in your mind? Like we normally take reality just for granted in kind of like an analog way, but you can actually, I think, access the vector space in your mind and understand what your mind is doing 
to take in all the world data. And, and, and what it is actually doing is trying to remember the least amount of information possible. So it's taking a massive amount of information, filtering it down and saying what is relevant, and then how do you create uh, a, a vector space world that, that is a very, very tiny percentage of that original data. Um, and then based on that vector space representation, you make decisions. And so it's, it's like a, really a compression, decompression, uh, that's just going on on a massive scale, which is kind of like how physics is. Like think of physics, al physics algorithms as essentially compression algorithms for reality. So that's what physics does. The, the, those physics formulas are compression algorithms for, rea for reality, which, which is uh, like, and this may sound very obvious, but if you simply, what, what it means is like, and, and we are the proof points of this. If, if you simply ran a true physics simulation of the universe. This will obviously take a lot of compute, but a true physics simulation of the universe, if you give it enough time, eventually you will have sentience. If you did enjoy our video, please press the like button and subscribe. Thanks.